Thank you for clicking on the video. Welcome back to the channel. So as promised, I told you guys if episode four happened to pop back up that I would be back to review it. And so here we are. And I'm so glad that it did because at first I was a little bummed. Like, well, darn, maybe I should have watched this live. No, I ain't doing that. <laughs> I ain't doing that. But anyway, this is Love and Marriage Huntsville. I feel like, is this something on the screen or is it me? Hold on. Okay, we got it settled. It was something on my actual phone. I'm sure you guys couldn't see it, but I could see it and it was driving me crazy. Anyway, we are picking up. So we're still at the spa. Tisha, she has to step in between um, Kiki and Tiffany because... Tiffany don't know what she's talking about. I don't know why she's chiming in. And she knows that as well. Yeah, I don't have nothing to do with it. Yeah, I wasn't there. Okay, so please, zip it. <laughs> That's all we saying. Stormy chimes in. Well, if you felt like I, if you felt like Stormy was saying something, if you felt like Stormy was doing a lot, and you should have just told Stormy, you could just tell me that it was a lie. You could have told me right then and there. She, she's aggressively speaking to this lady and then saying, we just talking it out. We just talking it out. This is how you move forward. We just talking it out. You're loud. You're a little aggressive. Relax. <laughs> I don't know how to, everybody doesn't know how to read that. Everybody doesn't take that as, oh, we just hashing it out. I mean, some people in their families, that's just how they did hash things out loud. They yelled at one another. And it was understood that we're just we're just hashing it out. And then you get into social settings and think that you could do that there. And it's like, no, no, ma'am. And see, this is why Melody is bringing up etiquette later on in the episode. Let's just move on because they do this back and forth. Um, and <laughs> Melody just gets up. She's going to just remove herself from the situation. I didn't come. Let me let me do <laughs> let me do horse Melody. I didn't come to do, I didn't come to do this. And so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave. It's not really peaceful anymore. So I'm just gonna leave. All right, my ladies. It was so good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know, ladies. I'm just gonna have to go. I don't know if this is what you guys think is peaceful, but it's really not. And so I'm just gonna go. Mel, just go. This you you couldn't wait to to really pretend to be horse. <laughs> you couldn't wait. You couldn't wait. You couldn't wait because because you told us uh, uh, ahead of time in your confessional that my voice is just not coming back because I just wasn't feeling well. <laughs> anyway, moving on. <laughs> the guys meet up. Marceau, Maurice, and Martel. They meet at the batting range. Sheree ends up calling while they're there. So, of course, now we got to talk about Sheree. Maurice is like, I mean, you was just walking people to the door. As if there was anything to that. Like, you just... The way that they carry. <laughs> this is why Mel be upset. Now, I do understand that. I understand that she's annoyed at the fact that every chance they get, we got to be talking about Mel and Martel, and Sheree, and Martel, and what does she think about that? You know, we're, we're really sent, make putting the focus on the Holtz still, and I just really want us to stop. They're no longer the Holtz. It's not Holt and Holt. You know, like, we don't have to always <laughs> be worried about how Mel might feel about something, or how Martel feels about something. We don't have to always do that. And Maurice is always prying anyway, because he want to talk about Sheree. Let's talk about Sheree. Is she the one? You know, will she be here? Will she be at this event? Will she be at that event? What's going on with that? When Marceau arrives, because he just in time. Wait, hold that thought. Hold that thought. Let me get on in here and see what's going on. <sighs> Martel doesn't know how he feels about Sheree. <laughs> Maurice has to quote himself one, uh, once again, uh, uh, an unstable man is unstable in all his ways. Yeah, yeah, all that. <laughs> Martel, they start playing the game. Martel done hit the cameraman with the, um, with the ball. <laughs> they looking up like, oh, you all right, man? He say he all right. He's saying it's all right. 
Um, they will listen. That they don't pay enough, I'm sure, <laughs> for me to be getting hit by the balls and hearing this bad cage. Anyway, Martel, he says he's having a little shindig for for his upscale magazine cover. I don't know if he's on the cover or if you know he's just he he has he has a little piece in it, but he wants to have a party for it. Um, will Sheree be there? Yes, she'll be there. They talk about balancing family. Marceau talks about his dad who, who was 20 at 27. He had already had eight kids and Martel is like, and he ain't bail or nothing. And it's like, why you, <laughs> we shouldn't be, we shouldn't be shocked by a man sticking around for all eight kids. We should not be taken aback by that. Like, <laughs> and he stayed. Well, yes, he's their father. He should have. He should have stuck around. What? What kind of life? What kind of childhood did you have? <laughs> like, I, Martel's daddy wasn't around, if I'm not mistaken. So maybe th this is that that came completely from childhood trauma. But for him to assume that Mar Marceau and Maurice's daddy, you know, probably would or wouldn't stick around. You know, for eight of his kids. I guess he's saying it because my daddy ain't stick around for me. It was just one of me. So, I, I get it. I guess I get it. Um, Martel says that he wants more kids. He said he want a big family. He said he, he want a lot of kids. I, five kids is a lot of kids. Two kids is a lot of kids. I got two. It's a lot. It's a lot of kids. It's a lot. <laughs> My children are always asking me, Mommy, what if, if we had another, if you had another baby, if I had a little sister, would that be too many kids? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I couldn't imagine having three children. I couldn't. Three? Child, please. Um, and people be having eight and ten. More power, more power to you. You know, go on and be fruitful and multiply. But for me and my womb, we done. <laughs> we was two and done. Um, anyway, like I want to move on from there because that 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 scene one time one time about eh, one time about nothing. Marceau is at the office with with Gino. Gino come in there. Um, you know, Marceau of course fills him in. Of course, on the daily activities, what's going on. Um, they are building a rapport together. You know, they're building up this partnership. Um, and. Gino, you know, he feels like he he got some ideas and most of his ideas are in favor of Tisha, like being more hands on with everything. Um, he tells him or that sh I should say he suggests that Tisha be the one to look over their expense reports. And, you know, he thinks that she's an asset and she should be involved more. And Marceau says that, you know, he's torn. He's torn because he knows that. She knows his deepest thoughts, you know, as her husband and or whatever, as her spouse. But she doesn't know his deepest thoughts um, as a businessman. He doesn't really he doesn't really communicate every little detail to her um, as far as bills go or whatever. Like there there may be a month where, you know, fi finances are a little tight. He doesn't convey that to her. And, and I'm trying to figure out why. Why you feel like you don't need to tell her it's tight this month? <laughs> so you're not going to tell her it's tight this month. Tisha going to go shopping. And then you're going to come come home fussing because she spent money. But you didn't communicate that it was tight this month. Anyway, Gino got all the good advice <laughs> for Marceau as far as um, him allowing Tisha to be more hands-on with her business. Um, she should She should know every detail. There should be nothing she doesn't know. He feels, Gino feels like he wishes, he wishes that he had done the same with his ex-wife. Um, he tells him that you don't want sheep. He give him this, he give him this wolves and sheep analogy. He say, his uncle told him that you don't want no sheep. You know, you want a wolf in the face. You want your wife, you want a wolf pack. <laughs> you know, where everybody knows how to hunt and get out there and do what it, do what needs to be done. And not so much trying to, you know, be the protector and, and she's just this damsel in distress. And then you just create sheep mentality. You know, they just going along with what you got going on and they're sheep. They don't, they're, they're, they're lacking, you know, like you can't, no. <laughs> 
Also, the girl is smart, okay? Let her go to work if she want to go to work. But he tells him being too much of a protector creates sheep. And Marceau just all of a sudden has this, oh, really? This aha moment. Like his daddy ain't told him that. Like Tisha ain't been saying this for the last, how long they been married? 17 years, 14, 15 years? However long they been married. She been saying it. And you just now, what? Wow. Well, when you put it like that, <laughs> she been saying this. She been saying all that. Anyway, Kimmy, she's at the office. Um, Tisha drops by. Kimmy says that she has an extra room in her office that Tisha can come and work out of. It is at the, before that. Right now, the stuff's still in there, but it was there for Mar I mean, for Maurice's podcast, which she haven't used in a, which she hasn't used in a while. And so, Tisha can come on in there if she would like to until her office is um, finished getting you know finished getting built or whatever. Melody drops by, you know, so Kimmy done, Kimmy done um, bombarded them with a whole little meeting because she feels like, listen, we are the we are the start of the collective of the of the comeback group. We really need to be getting along, you know, like they she wants to we we trying to rebrand. <laughs> We're trying to get back on, you know, what we was on in, in season one with the comeback group. And so. Kimmy wants everybody, you know, to be on the same page. It's time to move forward. Um, Mel, come, when she comes in, Mel is in good spirits, you know. So that's a good sign. She's she's not going to be disagreeable today. Uh, but Mel thinks that the respect factor is, is what's been lacking. And so she wants to really plan a tea party where she has the lady. Um, I can't think of the lady's name right now who wrote the book on etiquette. Uh, but but she gonna have somebody around there teaching etiquette and how to communicate effectively and all of that. Kimmy agrees. They all they both agree because Kimmy is like, you know, you need to be able to tell a sis sometimes. Oh wait, wait a minute, your tone, your tone making me feel a little squirrely. <laughs> and that's 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 real. You got to be able because everybody, like I said, everybody is not mature enough to be met with 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 said shady tone and not come back with 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 more shade of their own i'm 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 gonna go on and say i'm i'm that kind of person um i really try and i really and i pray that one day soon i'll be able to catch your shade and let it roll right off my back and not feel like i got a clap back or even when it's subtle because some people think that they are subtly shading you and it's like that was loud as hell and now I gotta respond just as loud and now I'm the bad guy <laughs> who done took it too far you know like it's really not fair <laughs> when it comes with when it comes to growth sometimes it's just it's like it's you really got to bite the bullet you really got to bite the bullet um but anyway she think they need a lesson in etiquette and um they agree like I said Tisha thinks that it's right on time, you know, because she's preparing for the Black Business Expo. Not Expo. Expo. We're we, we going to the Black Business Expo. Um, anyway, the you know, the meeting ends on a good note. It's a positive meeting. They get they really get along well. It's a it's, you know, it's it's nice to see. See, Mel, you can do it. You can do it, girl. I believe in you. I believe in you. Tisha and Marceau. They are at the house. Tisha, she's um, preparing a presentation for the group, for the comeback group. When they all meet, she want to run it past Marceau. Marceau talks to her about his conversation with Gino. And Tisha is just so taken aback, like, wow, babe. I'm so happy you said that. I would have been like, nigga, I've been saying that. But all right. I'm glad to see you on board. <laughs> It's nice to know you can hear me now. Guess when your friends say it, now you can. It's just, it's just like your kids. They don't listen to you until somebody else has to show them or somebody else has to tell them. Then they'll, then they'll hear you out. <laughs> um. Anyway, the comeback group, they get together. Um, They're there, like I said, to discuss the Black Espo. Mel gets there. She ignored Martell, of course. And I just want to know where everybody be going. <laughs> now, I, I'm glad, you know, that everybody, you know how it is. The first season, people come to the scene a lot more regular 
then they do the second season. The second season, they it's the it's the glitz and the glam. But it's, sometimes it's like, where y'all going in these outfits? Martel, where you was coming from in your three-piece suit? In your tux? Where was you coming from? Melody, where you going? Got a hot date or something? She got a date night after, I guess. <laughs> where do the people be going <laughs> after filming? They so dressed up. They so dressed up. Anyway, um... They 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 want to meet. They want to meet, you know, so we can get the comeback group together. Um, the Scots get started with their presentation. They start talking about, you know, the past practices and how things used to be. We not on that no more. Of course, we <laughs> we flashed all, to all the other meetings in the past that have not gone well. Um, things in the past ain't been productive. So let's start anew. Let's do some, let's do some new things. They talk details. Kimmy asks if this is there, is, is this y'all of it? And we just coming to hell or like, is this a comeback group event? Like we just need to know, like, am I just showing up to participate? Kimmy said, all I hear is this is Tisha and Marceau's event and they have repurposed the comeback group. And go and go resell it to the comeback group. <laughs> the all, but it, it basically ain't nothing new under the sun. This is these new these ideas are not new. This is what we was trying to do to begin with. But okay, <laughs> okay. Um, Kimmy says that you know you know looking at the flyers and all of that. This really looks like a Tisha and and Marceau event. So what's going on? You know, and they say that they're just you know trying to kickstart it. And um, we can, and they can, they can help them execute. You know, it, they gonna kickstart. Y'all can help us execute. <laughs> them X's really get they they get my girl. She don't, when when it comes to the letter sounds. What does the what does the X sound make? <laughs> sis sis said, listen, execute expo. <laughs> And I hate to laugh. I really hate to laugh because that that's some that's a sore spot for her. So Lord forgive me for that. I should not make fun of that lady's speech impediment and the fact that the way she pronounces her her words are a little bit different. You know, like I I really shouldn't do that. So I take that back. See, growth, and that wasn't nice. And see, I ain't finna be doing that. <laughs> I ain't doing that. I'm like, we not doing that. We not doing that in this new season. Um, Mel thinks that it's a great idea, but Mel says, what's the budget for the speakers? <laughs> Tisha say, what you mean budget? How much do you plan to pay your speakers? Oh, we didn't plan on charging for the event or paying the speakers. <laughs> Martel gonna whisper to Marceau, ask her what a budget, ask her, ask her what her, what her fees. Oh, don't ask me what my fee is it's none of your business my management team will will be will send you an, in, an invoice via email we'll send you an email don't be worried about that <laughs> kimmy says okay what about the marketing are we just going to do social media like do you want us to post on our social media mail chimes in oh, okay so if we're doing social media how much do you guys ch um, pay for each post and tisha say we ain't paying for posts <laughs> And then T and Tisha flat out is like, girl, I don't know if you're gonna be a part because we can't afford all your fees, all your <laughs> all your fees, all you got going on. I'm I'm when it comes to this particular group in this situation, I don't know. I'm on the fence with it. I'm on the fence with it. I've been in this situation. I've been met with a a, a, a situation where you a, you a friend thought that you should do something for them. And they didn't, they didn't have a budget to pay, you know, and that wasn't that at the time that wasn't communicated. And so with this situation, it's different because Tisha flat out saying, oh, we ain't got it in the budget. With my situation, I was led to believe that I would. And then it turned out to be something different, you know, and so there was a little, little spat there. You know, we got over it, got through it because I mean, we friends, but it's hard. It's tough. It's tough in this type. That's uh. But Mel say y'all gonna pay me. I get paid every other time to do any other speaking engagement to post on for anybody else. Y'all paying too. But on the flip side of that, it's like, come on, Mel. Really? 
the 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 at the root of this comeback group y'all were supposed to be this was about community and building community and, and putting businesses into into the community and so you should just do do the people a solid but may i say i thought i had a dark soul do you a favor girl i'm not doing that <laughs> and for that listen what what the hell mel you right you right <laughs> you right you right um Anyway, that you, you uh, they're trying to breeze on by. You know, we don't want to talk details right now. This is just, I'm just we just letting y'all know it's a soft soft launch meeting. <laughs> don't worry about the details yet. Marceau get up to try to pop 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 the bottle of um the black cham the chocolate champagne, and they like wait wait we toasting to what what we what we agreed to like we 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 ain't talked the details yet. That's Kimmy. Kimmy want to know. The intricate details, she want the fine print. They ain't trying to give it to her. <laughs> they like, girl, listen, just can we toast <laughs> so we can get on up out of here? <sighs> Mel suggested they that they get sponsors. She did do that, which was, you know, helpful. Y'all need some, oh, stomach growling, it's time to cut it out. <laughs> it's time to eat, though, it really is. Um... But I'm fasting, so you just gonna have to wait on it, boo. <laughs> um. Anyway, this is also a. Uh, I don't know if it was of if it was a productive meeting, but <sighs> these people confused. <laughs> what y'all want us to do? Like, are we just showing up? What are we doing here? What are we doing here, really? I guess they gonna dive deep as as we go further along. I don't know, but they, they just make their toast and go. Until next time. <laughs> next week going to be good, though. Next week going to be good. Uh, and I'm just going to go on and say, I don't know how I feel about this situation with Mel and I want Martel at the birthday party either. Um, In this instance, you are taking out whatever you got against Martel on that baby. Because she would absolutely want her dad there. Absolutely. So the fact that you are at the door blocking him, talking about, oh no, spend time on your day. Come on, Mel. I ain't gonna dive deep. I ain't gonna go in because I don't have much context. I just got a trailer. But I'm just gonna go on and say, what from what I saw, we gotta do better on both sides. Because Martel, was you invited? Probably not. You shouldn't have been showing up. At least call and say, "Can I come?" You know, then then that puts her in the hot seat if she if she denies your access to your own baby's birthday party. I don't want to do this <laughs> this 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 custody battle shit. I don't want to do the Holt and Holt bullshit. I'm done with it. <laughs> they done with the relationship. Can we be done? With the intricate details of of their, of this divorce of and now we got custody battles. I just don't wanna. <laughs> anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. Be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. It's called me Busby, and I'll chat with you later. Peace and light.